What's up, guys? It's Friday, and so you know what time it is. It's time for WTF, baby. What the f And this week, we have a return guest. The Bin Azadi. This is the same guy who says egg whites make you fat. Eating frequent meals is gonna make you die young. Let's see what he has to say this week. The top of these like this. This refrigerator has groceries inside of it that have an expiration date. What would happen if we let all these groceries expire and just leave them in the refrigerator? Nasty, disease will grow in that environment. Your body is like this refrigerator. You have cells, you have mitochondria, you have protein and fats that all have an expiration date. When you fast, you turn on this process called autophagy, eat thyself, and your body gets rid of the junk. That's why this gentleman, a world-renowned oncologist, said if you completed a seven-day water-only fast, you would reduce your risk of cancer 95%. 95% of statistics are made up on the spot 100% of the time, most times, sometimes. That which can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Extraordinary claims require extraordinary data. Also, I just want to get a really, can we get a, get a good Picard face palm in here? Okay, so Ben, I think his first name's Ben. I can't imagine it's Ben. Ben, it, it's like you took a high school biology class and were like, there's mitochondria, proteins, fats in your cells, also autophagy. Fasting. Yes, you have misfolded proteins, you have old proteins, you have cellular components that need to be degraded. This is done through lysosomes, like you have multiple ways of, of doing degradation of these components, but a lot of it's lysosomal and autophagy based, which by the way, you don't have to fast to have autophagy. Autophagy is always happening. Now, your relative rate of autophagy will increase during fasting. It also increase in da 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 calorie deficit. The thing to keep in mind is that one, autophagy is not always a good thing. There are some cancers where autophagy is actually elevated during that cancer. I'm not saying that like trying to induce autophagy is going to give you cancer, but just looking at this is like a monkey could come up with this kind of stuff. Like, ooh, 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 autophagy, good, ooh, 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 ooh. Biology, physiology is much more complicated than that. There is nuance to everything. I'm not saying don't fast. I'm not saying you can't fast. You have to eat at some point. Otherwise, you would, you would just die, you'll die. What's actually happening is you're just eating a low calorie diet if you're fasting for several days. But you're gonna eat at the end of that. And typically, unless you're gonna like try to start of yourself or lose a massive amount of weight, if you're not losing weight consistently over the course of these fasts, that means you're actually making up for the calories that you're not eating by eating more. So what do you think happens to autophagy during that? Oh, oh, it gets inhibited. Oh, interesting. And don't you think the inhibition is going to be proportionate to the calories that you consume? Now I've seen Ben, He's pretty lean, you know, appears pretty lean. He doesn't appear to be wasting away. My guess is he's maintaining his body weight. So he's not in a calorie deficit. During his fasting periods, I'm sure autophagy increases. And then when he eats a very large amount of calories during his non-fasting period, which he would have to do if he's fasting for days and days and not losing weight, he would have to be eating a lot of calories during his feeding windows. Guess what? Autophagy is going to go way, way down. The net difference is going to be likely zero compared to somebody just eating at maintenance or doing a comparable calorie deficit. I am not saying that intermittent fasting isn't a reasonable tool. It can be, but this idea that fasting is gonna make you live longer. There is zero, none, zilch, zero human evidence that intermittent fasting increases longevity independent of the calorie deficit it imposes. Now there is a lot of evidence to show in animals that calorie restriction prolongs life, but keep in mind, we're, we're not talking about lifetime calorie restriction. People don't understand this. If somebody was in a calorie restricted diet their entire life, they would die because they would waste away because they'd be losing weight the entire time. Because if you're not losing weight, it's not a calorie deficit. What they are doing in these animal studies is they're taking animals and they're putting them on say a 20% restriction from their ad libitum intake. And yes, they lose weight for a period of time and then they stop losing weight because that's now their maintenance. So really what's happening is they're keeping these animals from becoming overweight, they're keeping them relatively lean and they live longer because they have less adipose tissue. Because adipose tissue, excess adipose tissue, is associated with higher rates of mortality. I know you guys don't like really simple, well-explained answers, but that's probably it. Those animals aren't in a calorie deficit their whole life. They're not fasting their whole life. 
They're in an initial calorie deficit, which allows them to lose some weight, which they then maintain, and they live longer than animals that can just eat as much as they want. And so that is very likely to carry over to humans as well. We know that excess adiposity increases your risk of mortality and CBD and cancer and those sorts of things. But there's no evidence that fasting in particular is magic. Sorry, David Sinclair. Sorry, Benazadi. There's no evidence. Sure, you can find some isolated mouse studies you can find yeast studies. Cool. There is zero human data, and there's also zero primate data that fasting increases longevity independent of the calorie deficit it imposes. So if you like fasting and you find it fits your lifestyle, it's a reasonable tool to control your calorie intake. But you don't need to fast in order to get the benefits of fasting, which are mostly related to the calorie deficit it imposes or the calorie control. All right, fasting zealots, get in those comments and tell me how wrong I am and cite all kinds of mechanistic in vitro research to support your points. Actually, I'd be impressed if you do that because usually you just get in and put in YouTube videos and like, herder, uh, look at this guy said it and uh, he has white hair and a lab coat, so he must be right. So if you actually cite some empirical evidence, I'd be impressed, even if your empirical evidence sucks. All right, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you next week.